I've led six botany and foraging intensives, each one in a different place in a different season. Hello, my name is Tom Elpel, the founder of Green University and the author of Botany in a Day, The Patterns Method of Plant Identification. The idea to teach a botany and foraging intensive arose after publishing the book Foraging the Mountain West with co-author Chris Reed in 2014. It was really a selfish idea because I wanted to travel and learn from other instructors across the West. I co-hosted the first botany and foraging intensive with Kyle Chamberlain uh, in Eastern Washington and the class was actually a full month long and we toured parts of Washington and Idaho and Oregon. I primarily taught the plant identification side of the course while Kyle focused on the foraging and the ecology and we wove in some primitive skills as well. Every year is different as we explore a new place in a new season and see what's out there. More than just a class, there is a tribal aspect of living together in community and traveling together on a botanical adventure. It was Kyle's genius that we also toured uh, gardens and orchards and permaculture farms that really set the pattern for the botany and foraging intensive ever since. Kyle's homestead served as a base camp for the first week of the program as we did day trips out from there, and it was a hot one with temperatures over 100 degrees every day. Then we headed out on a road trip into the Snake River country of Idaho to see what else was out there. The typical class format is that we'll spend about half a day doing plant identification where students gain proficiency in keying out plants with botany in a day. The other half of the day will focus on uh, foraging, herbalism, primitive skills, or sustainable living and permaculture type tours. And in this case, we visited my friend Don, who has a homestead uh, deep in the Snake River country, where uh, plums and apricots and blackberries grow wild all over the place. And he's got an uh, orchard of uh, uh, peaches, a vineyard, even has some um, figs and pawpaws uh, growing in Idaho. Everything is straight up and straight down in the Snake River country, so we bounced back and forth between the hot bottomlands versus the uh, cooler mountain country of the snake. Wherever we went, there was always something new to identify and something exciting and new to forage. At one point, we even ran into a geology class and ultimately traded a botany lesson for a geology lesson. We cooked lots of pies on the road, and at some point Susie picked up a roadkill bunny and cooked that too. A big part of the class was harvesting as much wild and feral fruit as we could find along the way. Kyle slept by the drying apricots to ward off any bears. The apricots are so wild they get dispersed by bears. This is a, some bear scat I found, and it's also a musical instrument. <laughs> After harvesting and drying an abundance of feral fruits, uh, we ultimately migrated back to the mountains where we went on a little wilderness survival trek. And we feasted on uh, wild uh, currants and gooseberries and uh, huckleberries and some beautiful yampa roots. More than just a class, we grew together as a tribe and built memories that we will never forget. For our second botany and foraging intensive, we returned to Eastern Washington uh, and partnered with Kyle Chamberlain again, uh, this time to really focus on the spring root crops of the scab lands of Eastern Washington. So in addition to our daily botanizing, uh, focusing on plant identification, we really uh, emphasized the uh, harvesting of root crops, especially the big uh, biscuit roots that thrive in the thin rocky soils that were uh, created as a result of the uh, Ice Age floods from Glacial Lake Missoula from 13 to 15,000 years ago. Starchy root crops can be hard to come by uh, in the wilderness, uh, but here they are crazy abundant and can be uh, harvested sustainably. So in addition to the uh, biscuit roots, we harvested some um, uh, water leaf, some yellow bell, some spring beauties, uh, wild onions, yampa, all kinds of uh, starchy spring roots. 
more than anything, it was a thrill to be out uh, celebrating the first flowers of spring, uh, especially when it is still winter back in Montana, where I call home. We put our plant identification skills to the test and enjoyed uh, experimenting and cooking up wild starchy roots in every way that we could think to do it. Spring unfolded before our very eyes as we went on numerous day hikes to uh, get out and see what was popping. Spending extended time in the field like this is a great way to develop proficiency with botany in a day and recognizing plant family patterns. We even brought the canoes along to play with outside of class time. The experience also included a little impromptu flint napping session. Our third botany and foraging intensive uh, started right here at my house in Pony, Montana. We spent the first few days in and around this area and then uh, migrated eastward from here as we solidified the two-week structure for the class. Plant identification and foraging remains core to the class, of course, uh, but we also did tours, like uh, touring Sage Mountain Center to see uh, their buildings and gardens and practice keying out flowers there. We also toured uh, a local greenhouse as like an indoor tropical paradise. And there always seems to be some meat component to the class, in this case butchering a roadkill deer, uh, as instructed in my book Foraging the Mountain West, perfectly legal here in Montana and most of the western states. We harvested an abundance of uh, gooseberries in Saskatoon and did a uh, tour of paradise uh, permaculture in Livingston, Montana as we worked our way eastward across the state. We parked ourselves at uh, Itchkape Park uh, in Columbus, Montana for a few days to uh, really process our Saskatoons to make those into berry cakes and to dry those in the sun. And on our day off from class, we decided to uh, paddle the river for entertainment. Uh, we also spent a day uh, keying out flowers in the gardens at Zoo Montana, which was actually the first time I'd ever been there. That's one of the fun things about the class is traveling and exploring and visiting places that uh, we might not see otherwise. These first three botany and foraging intensives were all very small classes, uh, mostly due to a lack of marketing on my part that I'm always depending on word of mouth for people to uh, learn about the class and find their way to it. We made a little bit of uh, applesauce with apples we picked outside the zoo. Also found some uh, choke cherries and some beautiful black currants. South Central Montana is home to a little pocket of Utah-like landscape and uh, even some Utah juniper plus some pygmy rabbits. Plant identification is fun wherever we go and there's always an aspect of wildlife observation as well. We got caught out in a beautiful hailstorm one day and another time we went out dumpster diving and came back with the mother load of delicious strawberries all free. For our first botany and foraging uh, intensive in Colorado, I partnered with uh, Brianna Wiles and Kat McKinnon. And this was our first really big class, uh, thanks especially to uh, Brianna's marketing, that we had uh, 20 students, which was uh, 19 women and one guy, the women having signed up through Brianna and the guy having signed up through me. Uh, but we had uh, a great big class and just really a fun tribe of people for this two-week adventure together. This class featured a heavy emphasis on primitive skills as the students made uh, Colburn bowls and spoons and bow drill fires and we even went to a farm for a hog butchering one day. But really plant identification is what it's all about and we really emphasize practice, practice, practice at keying out the, uh, the flowers and getting to know those plant family patterns. This class also included a heavy emphasis on herbalism uh, led by Brianna and Kat. We enjoyed uh, three different campsites over the uh, course of the two-week uh, class, uh, one on private land and two with permits on the National Forest, 
which really gave us a good uh, cross-section of um, different habitats across western Colorado. We called this really the kitchen sink of classes. Uh, students were staying up finishing their projects by headlamp. We had just thrown so much, uh, so many different types of things into this one program. But uh, hey, it was a lot of fun. Although people really sign up for either the plant identification or the herbalism or the foraging, it's actually, uh, I think, the tribal component of it. Um, being together with like-minded folks, uh, doing these potluck dinners together, just kind of living as a tribe that is so meaningful in this day and age that is really perhaps the most powerful part of the two-week botany and forage intensive. Students build relationships with each other that last far beyond the class itself. For our fifth botany and foraging intensive, we started at my home here in Pony, Montana again, uh, but this time we ultimately traveled northwest across the state, uh, which included a stop for a tour at Sage Mountain Center to uh, check out the alternative buildings there and the gardens and greenhouse, and of course to do a lot of uh, keying out of plants there. We stayed at Lolo Hot Springs for a couple of days, and we were privileged to have Elaine Chef from Green Path Herbal School uh, come in and teach herbalism. We spent a couple uh, days in the Missoula area, and then on our travel day north, uh, students had the option of visiting the Garden of 1000 Buddhas, as well as the National Bison Range. We camped out at uh, Michael Billington's Permaculture Homestead near uh, Polson, Montana, and we learned a lot about um, gardening and permaculture, some alternative construction, uh, and really uh, a lot about the wild seed harvesting, uh, the business of harvesting and selling wild seeds. In addition to daily plant identification practice, uh, we also did some really interesting garden tours uh, here with uh, mulch, both rock mulch and purslane as a living mulch in the garden. We also toured alternative buildings at Wheaton Labs. Our final stop of the uh, two-week botany and foraging intensive was actually in Idaho, and uh, we followed a scenic uh, dirt road through the mountains to get there, which was just incredibly uh, beautiful, except we were ultimately thwarted by a landslide on the road and had to turn around and go all the way back, consuming an entire day in the process. Keep in mind that we had 20 students and 20 vehicles in our caravan, but we did eventually make it to Idaho where we visited Darcy Williamson and learned more about uh, herbalism and greenhouses and a whole lot more. Class officially uh, ended there, but uh, some of us afterwards went on a side tour up into the mountains and then into Hell's Canyon to uh, gather some wild fruits. Uh, both for drying and for canning to uh, stock the cellar to get through the winter. We feasted on uh, apricots, uh, plums, blackberries, and mulberries. For our sixth botany and foraging intensive, we returned once again to Colorado, uh, this time partnering, first of all, with wild food girl Erica Davis, uh, and we camped at the uh, Bristlecone View Ranch at uh, 10,000 feet in elevation near Fairplay, Colorado. And one of our uh, many foraging skills was to make our own mustard with wild mustard seed. From there, we uh, migrated south into the San Luis Valley where we partnered with uh, survival skills uh, expert Robin Blankenship, who right away uh, took us out on a surprise event to uh, skin a bison on a bison ranch and to uh, tour the uh, amazing buildings there. For our day off, uh, half the crew decided to uh, tour Great Sand Dunes uh, National Park, where we uh, had a good time uh, climbing these mammoth sand dunes, and cooled off in the creek after a hot climb in the sun. We also stopped at Colorado Gators Reptile Park, and uh, even bought a bunch of live tilapia that we uh, brought back to camp for dinner. We toured uh, Robin Blankenship's uh, straw bale home and homestead and thoroughly botanized the area. Robin taught a friction fire class, uh, emphasizing skills that uh, 
optimize the procedure for women. For me, one of the great highlights of the class was touring Nick Chambers' biogas plant where he converted his septic tank to produce fuel for cooking. We spent a whole week with Robin Blankenship at Earthnack School and did numerous field trips out from there. Our final campsite was back at the Kevin Off Bison Ranch where he enjoyed his whimsical architecture and found lots of great plants for plant identification practice. We did a day trip out to Soul Mountain Farm where we toured their uh, greenhouses, got to learn about uh, worm composting, and uh, saw their hog operation, and got some hands-on experience in uh, making comfrey tea for fertilizer. We enjoyed a final day in the mountains, uh, polishing our plant identification skills. The Botany and Foraging Intensive is a new adventure every year. Uh, as we travel to a new place, uh, work with new instructors, always a great opportunity to hone your skills. Come join us this year for the next Botany and Foraging Intensive.